Croft and in this video I'm going to show you how to work out the inverse of a function. So in this question here we've been given the function f of x and underneath it asks us to find f of minus 1 of x. That just means find the inverse of this function above. So if you're good at changing the subject of a formula these questions are going to be super easy okay because that's what we're going to be doing. The first step is to write down x equals. Now the reason I'm choosing x is because our answer needs to be in terms of x. If it was all in terms of y, we would write y equals and so on. Then you have to write down your function, so 3x plus 1, but change that letter x to a different letter so that it's not the same as this one here. And it doesn't matter which letter you choose, I'm just going to choose y. Now, Next, we have to rearrange this equation to make y the subject. So that just means rearrange to get y equals. So I need to undo everything that's happening around y until y is by itself. So I'm going to leave whatever's closest to y together for the moment, and I'm going to get rid of this plus 1. So the reverse of plus 1 is to subtract. Just remember to do the same thing on both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. On the right hand side, 1 minus 1, well, that's just 0, and I'm left with 3y. And on the left hand side, I've now got x minus 1. Now, the final step, well, y is currently being multiplied by 3, so the opposite is to divide by 3. So again, I have to make sure I do the same thing on both sides of that equation. On the right hand side, 3 divided by 3 is just 1, so I'm left with 1y. And on the left hand side, well, the nicest way to write this is to write it as a fraction. Because I've, if I write 3 as the denominator, that's just the same as doing x minus 1 divided by 3. So we've actually finished. This part here is the answer, okay, in terms of x. So when asked to find the inverse of this function f of x, you would write down x minus 1 over 3. Okay, so there's the first one. I've been given a function called g of x up here and I need to work out the inverse of g of x. So just like before, start by writing down x equals followed by your function but changing the letter x to a different letter. So I'm just going to change it to y instead of x. Now I have to rearrange to make y the subject of the formula. So that just means rearrange to get y equals. So I need to undo everything that's happening around y. So first I need to get rid of this fraction. So the opposite of dividing by 3 is to multiply. So I multiply both sides of my equation by 3. On the right hand side where I do the opposite, well that just cancels and I'm left with y minus 1. And on the left hand side, well, x multiplied by 3 is 3x. So I'm left with 3x equals y minus 1. So we've got one last step. The opposite of subtracting 1 is to plus 1. So if I add 1 to both sides, on the right hand side, they cancel and I'm left with y. And on the left hand side, I've now got 3x plus 1. So we finished. We've rearranged to make y the subject of the formula. Remember, it's this part that's the answer. So if you're asked to work out the inverse of g of x, you would write down 3x plus 1. Okay, so there we go. One more to finish. Okay, so in this last one, I've been given a function m of x. It's written slightly different, the notation, but it means exactly the same thing. And here we're asked to work out the inverse of that function n of x. So just like before, write down x equals. Then you need to write down the function here, but replace x with a different letter. So I'm going to call it y again. And now we're just rearranging to make y the subject of the formula. So to get rid of a fraction, remember you must multiply by the denominator, so the part that's underneath. So I'm going to multiply by all of this, so y minus 1, and I'm going to put it in brackets because I'm multiplying all of that denominator. Okay. Now, on the right-hand side, where we do the opposite, it just cancels, and I'm left with 3. And then on the left-hand side, we have to multiply x by all of this. 
So I'm just going to write it down with its brackets to start with because it's always good to show all you're working out. Now I need to expand the brackets, so multiply them out. So x multiplied by y is just xy, and x multiplied by negative 1 is just negative 1x or negative x, and don't forget that 3. Now remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to make y the subject. We need to get y by itself. So we need to move everything away from y. So always leave whatever's closest to y together for the moment. So let's get rid of this minus x first. So I'm going to add x to both sides of the equation to keep it balanced. On the left hand side, if I add x to negative x, I get zero and I'm left with xy. I'm just gonna carry on this up here. So I've got xy on the left hand side of the equals and on the right hand side I've got 3 plus x. So the final step, I need to get rid of this x, okay, because y is being multiplied by x, the opposite is to divide. So I divide both sides of the equation by x. On the left hand side, well if I divide x by itself I just get 1y, okay. And on the right hand side, well the nicest way to write this is to put it as a fraction with the x as the denominator because that just means we're doing 3 plus x all divided by x. So there's the final answer. Okay, so when asked to work out the inverse of the function n of x, you just need to write it like that. Okay, so there's finding the inverse of functions. As you can see, it's just changing the subject of a formula. As long as you remember to write down x equals, change the other letter to a y, you're just rearranging to make y the subject of the formula.